Jean McCurdy. I'm part of the 1936 Lothian Birth Cohort, and it's been fascinating. First, uh, way back in 1947, we did some school tests. So here we are, all these years later, being interviewed again, doing the same tests that we did when we were 11 years old. So I'm uh, Chris Van Tulliken. I'm an infectious diseases uh, doctor in London. I'm also an MRC-funded research fellow at UCL. So Ian said a really nice thing. He said, when you own a cohort, that's all you think about when you drive home at night and when you're in bed at night. And I, I think I hadn't quite grasped the extent to which this is a sort of family, a very, very big extended family. And the, the passion that, I mean, it, he's an extraordinary individual, the passion that he brings to it. As a group of people, I think this, this test that a lot of them don't remember taking has then, has then sort of bound them together in this extraordinary thing that they all seem to love. I mean, they just, they love doing the tests, they approach it competitively, they love being a part of it, they love the way the data is shared with them. And I think, I can't imagine any, any other group treats their subjects quite this well in terms of using them to, to get really important data and then releasing it to them before publishing the studies. There is literally nothing I have filmed that is quite as spectacular as this. In terms of the scope and the ambition of what Ian is trying to do with the data. And I think, importantly, this research gives you some hope about making those changes because, you know, the basic message is you have some control, it's not predetermined, it's not set in stone, your life is not in your DNA. The, the results could equally have been the way your brain ages is entirely to do with your genetics, which I guess if you'd asked me a year ago, I would have said, yeah, it's all your genes, set in stone. It's just luck of the draw. And it seems like that isn't the case. And I think that is it's good for me. It's also a really nice thing to be able to say on BBC One. I don't want to go on telly and go, yeah, it turns out nothing you can do. So uh, hope you were born to the right parents. When I speak to people about it, they think, is that not mad, going around doing all these strange things? But for me, um, it was the idea of having absolutely everything looked at uh, to see whether I was different or not different from anybody else. And the fact that, unbeknownst to myself, I had diabetes and I would never have known if it hadn't been for the 1936 birth cohort. I guess the main thing I, I take away from today is that we have much more control over our destiny than we previously thought, even a few years ago. And a lot of that, I think, is from studies like this and from specifically this cohort. And the second thing I take away is, as a scientist, you can be gigantically ambitious with how much you try and shoehorn into one data set in terms of what you're trying to get out of it. And that is awesome. I'm looking forward to anything, everything. <laughs> Life is too short to worry about what happened yesterday. Let's keep looking forward. Tomorrow is another day.